take on everything and they can you know it's like it's just a computer in many ways a memory computer in loads of ways you know but it can't access and it's not that they can't access it gets in the way of any kind of flow space whether it's emotional psychological physical spiritual which is just means invisible the invisible ether the invisible energy i don't like the word spirit spirituality every word turns into its own um every word kind of turns into its own attack because it, it has this airy fairy quality about it like hey i'm spiritual i like that's why i like paul and slave because he doesn't come across He's on a higher level than, than than anyone I've ever came across. And he's not, hasn't got this spiritual airy fairy nonsense about himself. Like he'll just say what he's got to say. He'll speak from himself. And there's none of that there. So the word spiritual kind of like has become its own detriment, you know? So, so I just, you know, like invisible is best. The invisible force, you know, are you connected to an invisible force? That's better. Some, you know what I mean? Then, then that will become its own, <laughs> its own detriment later on, maybe as well. You know, but the, like, but the point is, is that the word is unimportant. You know, words are very, very important in communicating in a wor in a world that's completely gone. Try your best to communicate. Um, but the words in themselves are only just pointers, though, as well, from the invisible. Um, from the invisible energy, it's only pointers right so anyway i'm half asleep here it's kind of all right um all right this things shot into my system and it was just um you know a phrase i read years ago in a book let people save themselves most of us are not doing this we're there trying to help people now when I made that video last month or something about emotional manipulation, very much connected with that because we've been, it's part of the, of the system, the system that constantly puts out bad information from us, for us, incorrect information, which seems on its head like, well, you know, we're being good people, right? We're, we're out there. We're looking out for people. We're trying to help people. We're being good people. Let people save themselves because they don't want you to help them anyway. You have to understand that first. That will probably probably make it more clearer that people don't want your help. They want to be left alone. When people want to be left alone, leave them alone. If they're suffering and they're kind of like in victim mode and all the rest of it, there's nothing anyone else can do for them anyway because that's where people are mainly suffering in being torn away from the creator, from the, from the invisible energy, being torn away from that and just having nothing in them other than just emptiness and kind of like, you know, where, where am I going to get the next fix? And if you don't get the next fix, then you go into a myriad of different actions. But one of them is I'll get attention for being depressed or miserable or whatever, you know, so depression and misery, you know, is just uh, entertainment for these people. It's just like, oh, poor me. Oh, my life is so important. You know, why doesn't any, anyone recognize what I'm going through? This is not fair. That's not fair. Yet <clears throat> you you want it and you create it as well. You know what I mean? And I speak on that simply because that was me for the majority of my life. Unknowns to myself, of course. You know, even though I had inklings about it, of course, as well. Right. But but that shot into my system. Um you know, I'm driving my daughter to, to, to her job this morning. You know, it's just a routine that we have and everything, you know. And she's a good she's a good young woman, you know, and I know she is, you know. And But some of the times when she's not feeling the best or anything like that, I'll take it upon myself to kind of like, well, how do I help her out? How do I... Mm -mm. No, do nothing. Nothing, because it's nothing to do with me. They'll try and put everything onto you, of course. Like, I feel like this because of you. The amount of ex-girlfriends I've had but that, that have had this issue that they project onto me, right? So I feel depressed. I feel this way. It's because you didn't, because it's because you're not doing this correctly. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm exactly the same as when you first met me because I don't alter. I'm exactly the same as when you first met me. So what the fuck are you talking about? The fuck you want about, dude? 
you know? It's like, you know, I dressed the same when you met me. Now, a year or so later, the way I dress is a problem. I wore my shoes in your house when we first met. Now, it's a problem. Do you understand? So you have to understand that people are psychological nutcases, right? And they have to find someone who is, it's their fault. They have to project onto somebody else because they're unable to look at themselves in the mirror, you know? And so it's fascinating, dude. It's fascinating. It's fascinating but it can get you caught up in this world of human beings and all the rest of it in a very confused state. That's why you have to be on your own. That's why you have to walk alone. That's why you have to be, to rob a phrase from Paul, you know, my walk is so narrow or whatever he says. I can't even remember it now. It's only him and the spirit. It's only him and the spirit, right? So When you're dealing with human beings that alter according to the whims and changes of whatever's going on with inside them or whatever they heard in the news station last, you know, it can be very, very confusing. That's why you have to have nothing to do with human beings. Forget about them, dude. They're not that important. They're important beyond belief. And they're not that important at the same time. Okay? Because they're not that important that you're going to give over your life to, to, for these people that uh, are a waste of time and going nowhere. All right? They're only going somewhere on the physical plane and that's about it. You know what I mean? And then they want to drag you into it like, oh, look, look, this is going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. And your point is, we're just supposed to just not do anything because something might happen to us. Isn't that how we develop in certain areas? By taking risks. Calculated risks as well. Not risks that are just kind of like dumb and stupid. Calculated risks. You know, like if I... I'm shopping, just say, for instance, and I see someone that I like, right? Even though they don't seem to like me anymore because I've got a, a real confidence. They like me, and I can see that in their face, and I can see when they're talking to me. They like it, right? But it scares them later on. It's kind of like, oh, geez, that guy's kind of crazy, or he's kind of like, no, I'm free in a way that you're not. Do you understand? I'm free. Like they said in Fight, like your man said in Fight Club, but most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you're not. So I can approach someone who I like and make a, make an ass out of myself, so-called, and be direct and honest with, with them and with myself. And plus as well, I'm not really talking to them per se because I want to have sex with them, just say, usually it's the opposite sex because if I'm attracted to someone, I will try and I'll talk to them, right? And But it's not just, just for that. Mainly it's for the spirit, right? So I can talk to them because I'm putting myself in a faith state where I trust the spirit so I can do these things. I, you know what I mean? I can speak up. I can say things to people. I've said things to people now that are twice my size. I'm, well, I'm a big enough guy, but like even to men who have kind of like been arrogant with me and I will talk to them in a direct way and I can have them pretty much that he just wanting to get away from me because it's a faith-based system. It's not based on fear and kind of like just doing what everyone's doing. All right, which you're going to regret when you're on your deathbed, by the way. You know, maybe that'll jar you out of it a tiny bit. You will regret it when you're on your fucking deathbed that you didn't take more chances and risks. And real chances and risks are emotional in nature. They're emotional, psychological in nature. So if we don't take any risks, if we just play it safe, if we just, oh, that guy is crazy, so I don't want to have anything to do with him again. If we do things like that, we're going to regret it later on because... Uh, we get stuck then with people that are just boring, uh, don't want to advance, don't want to invisibly ad- advance. And are, we just want to keep everything the same. We've got to try and rock the boat a little bit, right? That's what we should be doing as human creatures, right? Rocking the boat a little bit, but it has to be calculated. It can't be just like getting arrogant or anything like that. So just say the woman I was talking to yesterday, uh, it was calculated, but at the same time, she was very nice to me at the same time. We had a good chat for five minutes or whatever, and it was it was kind of cool, right? So, but at the same time, if she would have turned around and been like, you know, uh, not wanting to talk to me or just kind of like, you know, oh, fuck you, you're, what do you want? Leave me alone, that kind of thing, which I've had before as well. That's fine. You say, okay, you want me to bother you? That's fine, no problem. You know, I appreciate you, take care. And that's it, right? So, like I said, in other videos, you ha- that uh, something has to be there within your system that you have goodwill towards 
your fellow man and woman. There has to be goodwill behind it. And when you have that, you can say what you want to them. And I mean that. You can say whatever the fuck you want to them, dude. Because it'll always be their problem how they react. Right? Because you know that there's goodwill inside you. You know that, like, I don't want to... If anything, I want you to do well. That's what goodwill really means, right? It just means I want... If it's possible and I hear that you've done good, or that something's good's happened in your life, or you've won the lotto or whatever, or something's happened that's good, I'd be like, geez, man, that's brilliant news. You know, so there has to be goodwill, right? And you can see the people that are kind of closed off and they're just walking around with a grumpy face. I recognize it because it was me not so long ago, right? And that's not to say that my face can't be po face sometimes. You see, that's a part of the game as well. It's like these people that are pretending to be happy all the time. Like, and they have to put this frozen happy smile on their face and then when they go home they don't know what to fucking do when i go home when i go back to the house i'm exactly the same as i am right now it doesn't matter what's happening i'll just work on my film and whatever and and if something tries to enter into my system that is negative uh it stands near the doorway all right because there's something there now that won't really allow it in it doesn't just come in it doesn't it doesn't even, it doesn't knock, it stands by the doorway, right? And it hasn't been given any permission to enter. They work them things out, right? And they sling some things that can come to you. So this idea of let people save themselves. So important for you and for everyone to understand this because if we don't understand this, we're going to be running around trying to help people and go, oh, how can I help you? How can I help you? And you're torturing yourself, okay? If people, whatever's going on with people internally, it's got nothing to do with anyone, okay? They've made that choice. This is the world that we live in. Even people that have had really bad experiences in life, they can have it not bother them so much, right? And... That's not to say if something really, really horrible happened to someone that, that, that there isn't a stage of all that kind of stuff as well. Of course there is. Of course there is. All right, that's natural. You know, so you can always try and catch people out with like, well, if something happened to you now, you'd be... Of course I would. Of course anyone would. All right? But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we can't speak on these things and that it only has to happen for a certain amount of time and then you'll just get back to living your life again because what can you do? You know what? We're not in charge of this world. We're in charge of how we want to live and react to things. And obviously there's always going to be other people with costumes coming up to you and saying you can't do this and you can't do that. Yeah, okay. And that's where the problem starts. Because some of these cop videos that I would watch as well, and you see these, these cops, man, putting hands on people that have done nothing. One guy done like this, like like this wrestling move on this guy that was just going to work the other day. I was looking at it and I was just thinking, it's a lunatic asylum, dude. You think that you have? Imagine if the guy had just done that to the cop because he wasn't answering his questions. You're a public servant, fatty. This guy was a fat fuck, by the way, a fat pork scratching in a fucking costume. And they think that like they have some sort of authority. And what they've done as well is that they've how it's they've made it very hard for us to attack back which we're naturally supposed to do someone puts their hands on you right doesn't matter what costume they're wearing if they're out in halloween on october 31st or whatever right someone puts their hand on you it's natural for us to defend ourselves right and these people are operating with a certain kind of protection because they're the highest gang on the planet the police are the highest gang on the planet right and that's what they are. They're just there working for a corporation and they're ex, 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 they're, uh, let me find another word here. All right, this is not a flow space, dude. This is not a flow space. They are expunging. They are extracting resources out of us for their corporate masters, which most of them have small hats on, by the way. All right, work that one fucking out. The, the eternal victims these fucking people, you know? And it was always going to be something like that, really, wasn't it? Because it's mind and heart control. That's how they've done it. You put one of them fucking people in a ring with me, one of them things with a small hat on, and he ain't going to last very long. But heart and mind control, he can do, because he spends his time there like a little, you know, like a little bookkeeper, you know, a little filthy fucking rodent. Anyway, fuck these people as well. Pieces of trash. 
Right. <clears throat> and they'll get their comeuppance one day as well. I know I'm segueing all over the place here, but those who know will know anyway. They'll get their comeuppance. And it's going to be pretty soon as well. People are getting fed up. All right. Fucking trash. But anyway, um, yeah, so let people save themselves, even if it's your daughter, even if it's whoever. It's got nothing to do with you, how they feel, because it's the invisible spiritual, which is where people are living from or not living from. It's got nothing to do with whether they got an extra piece of bacon on their sandwich. All right. So you got nothing to do. So sometimes just say when I go around out and about and I talk to people, I, I can I can I can see they show me who they are more than they show anyone else, even though they're living with. All right. Because how they react to me when I am talking to them. Right. Is who and what they are. They're, you know what I mean? So like I know them better than most of the people that they live with. All right, because they show me. They have to, because they don't know who the fuck I am, right? They don't know who and what I am. They have a clue, right? They don't know. They have an idea, and usually it comes from insecurity. Usually it comes from, I can't do this and I can't do that, and, you know, this person's crazy and all the rest of it. That's fine, you know, but it's a projection. It's nothing to do with who and what I am at all. They don't know anything about me, you know? So... <clears throat> So let people save themselves. These people that are walking around, you know, crying into their cereal bowls and, you know, my poor life and all the rest of it. And, and you know, and these people are just eternal victims, dude. They're eternal victims about everything. And plus as well, a lot of the things that they're complaining about, they've created because they're too dumb to realize what they've done through their whole life, which has been incorrect. All right. So they've created it to keep their misery going. And then you're going to try and take their misery away from them. They're going to go mad at you, bro. Lady, they're going to go mad at you. How dare you try and take the only, the, my only source of enjoyment through the day, which is feeling sorry about this thing I call me that doesn't really exist anyway. It's only a mental apparition in my own fucking head, a projection. Or it's what other people have told me what I am. So that's what I am. How dare you try and take that away from me? This is my only fun, being miserable and getting attention and people going, oh, look at him. Look at her. They have a bad time here. Oh. Poor him, poor her. Fuck these people. Fuck them. Fuck these people. They're having a great time, been miserable. <laughs> when I'm talking here, I'm talking about my old self as well, to a certain point as well. All right. And I know there's a part that goes, we don't really like it. I understand that. We don't, we don't, we don't want to see. We don't want to see fucking people having a hard time. But if you get caught up with them, they have to save themselves, right? They have to get to a point where they save themselves, all right? And you can't save yourself as well. Another paradox that comes through the doorway, all right? Or near the doorway. Can't save yourself. Impossible, okay? You can't save yourself. But you can get to a point where you've had enough and then something can happen and something can just alter within your system, but you can't do it. It has to be something else that, you know, we're such egos, we think like, well, I can do everything for myself. Yeah, great, try it. Try it, motherfucker. Try it. Try and change something. Try and change something that you are addicted to, right? Some behavior or something like that. Try it. Try and be happy. Try and be nice. Because it isn't what you think it is. All this is fake nonsense. Fake happiness, fake this. I'm not saying everyone's like that because there's exceptions to everything, right? Talking about the majority. Right, so you can't do it. And that's a good place to be in when you realize you can't do shit to get yourself out of that trap, all right? All you can do, the more you try, is to get more, you dig yourself more and more and more deeper into the ground. It's all you can do. It's all you're doing. So just stop in the sinking mud and just wait and see what happens. Adios.